<laughs> I'm always envious of like you and Emmanuel Derman. Okay. Because I really like the fact that you guys have been able to both skate the professional industry world as well as the academic world. Yeah. And I think true. it takes a very unique person to be able to do both halves. You have to have the scientific like curiosity and research to really dive into one topic and spend, you know, months or years doing research, writing papers and putting in more or less like those quiet hours behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Flip side out in the industry, right? Everyone wants to be excited and thrilling and like, you know, you're making money and you're pushing it for the business. And I see myself in a lot of ways as that struggle, which is like, I like the industry as a whole and I, I enjoy the money part and it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. But there's always part of me that always wonders if I should go back for that PhD and kind of step away from the industry more so to do, do more of the research. Like I enjoy, I enjoy doing the research and the academics. And a lot of times that gets put to the wayside in the industry. Like it's, we're here to make money. We're not here to write research. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, just to, on that point, I mean, you know, I, um, almost never reported to a PhD when I was on Wall Street. I was always reporting to people with <laughs> either a master's or a bachelor's degree. So like, it's not a prerequisite, you know, to be, to do well in uh, industry. It's, um, you know, and honestly, I mean, it, unless you're like specifically doing quantitative research, I mean, it's just unnecessary, you know? So, um, and you know, you can still manage quantitative research groups even without a PhD. And that's happened all over the place in the financial industry. So um, so it's not a prerequisite is point number one um, <clears throat> to be successful on Wall Street, that's for sure. Um, and um, I think, you know, the, the really the reason to do it is to you know, finally say to yourself, okay, I'm, you know, I've learned most of some field and I'm now at a stage to contribute back to it. And if you feel that's important, then it's a good thing for you to do. But if you don't, which is actually just dies most people, then, uh, you know, you shouldn't. Okay. So, <clears throat> so um, that's my sense. Um, actually, it's interesting you bring up Emmanuel Derman because I met him early on in my career. We met when I was a professor at Cornell and um, I really liked the fact that, you know, he was on the industry side and publishing. OK, so he was publishing in, in you know, in industry journals, which is fine. And, um, you know, I thought, thought, well, you know, that's kind of amazing that you can, you know, be in the real world, so to speak, and yet um, publish, you know. So so I, I basically mimicked him. Uh, so I, I, you know, a few years later, I, I had been him. I went to went to a big bank and. Um, did the same thing as him, which was published from, from industry, which is not very easy to do, as you probably know, mm -hmm. meaning it's not easy to do for several reasons. Like it's first, um, you know, there's all kinds of corporate governance issues at the, <laughs> the bank or the hedge fund where they're saying, why are you giving away the company's secret sauce? And, you know, you have to navigate that. <laughs> and on top of that, <clears throat> you know, you do kind of like learn what, is actually important and what's not actually important. And so you tend to just focus on what you think is important, which not everybody shares. Okay, so like the referees in particular won't necessarily share your perspective, right? So, I mean, you know, a concrete example, I, uh, I've written a lot of papers with this guy, Lauren Wu, who's an academic. And like, it really helps me that I co-author with an academic because he knows what they care about more than I do. And, um, and, um, so we would, you know, I would basically tell them, okay, a bit the secret sauce, but not specific to the company. So just more what the industry was doing, not mm -hmm. the company per se. And, um, you know, and let's say academics had no clue. And so we, you know, we'd submit the paper thinking, you know, you should get in first round because this is, you know, what's used and it's been successful. Why would you reject it? And it would be rejected for, you know, for not sort of addressing what is felt to be important in academia. So I mean, a concrete example was we built, you know, we had a way to build an applied vol surface that was actually being used in industry as a whole. And, um, you know, we submitted it to uh, one of the top four finance journals in like, which are Journal of Finance, GFQA, GFE, and uh, RFS. And anyway, it got rejected because they said, where's the economics? You know, where's the uh, intuition? And uh, so, you know, so we had to, re we, they left the door open a crack and, um, 
we rewrote it to sort of emphasize um, the sort of um, what's called the uh, sort of um, the risk aversion side of things like like looking at things under P not Q and um, sort of talking about um, let's say how preferences of so-called markets you know could be viewed which nobody cares about in industry okay I mean like you know <laughs> like as far as you know you build a good implied ball surface you're done and um, you know why let's say an option is priced different from P expectation is sort of not a concern, honestly, for most market making firms. And um, so, um, but anyway, academics care, so we had to address it. So, so it's, um, you know, it's kind of like, that's why it's hard, I could say. You have, it's, it requires two brains. And um, like, mm -hmm. honestly, like, if you want to be successful in publishing from industry, in academia, you're going to need to co-author with an academic. It's just too hard for an individual to do alone.